Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. This is your latest Manchester United news and we are here on Sunday morning and look, the thing I said and many of us have, 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 have seen started begins to, to, to gather more momentum and that is that Manchester United have got uh, Maurizio Pochettino on standby to take Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job. It is Sunday morning, so you do get in the UK uh, news outlets that are just for the Sundays. Um, so it doesn't surprise me about Pochettino. But yet again, we have another story coming out that Manchester United and Manchester City are uh, are, are looking at Pochettino seriously as their next manager of Manchester, well, of Manchester United and Manchester City, respectively. And, uh, you know, I, I just think that this is just brilliance, absolutely brilliance from the media. And probably, I don't know, Manchester United will deny they, they leak this sort of information out. So I'm not going to say that they do, but it's the timing of it that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. You know, we had two bad results at the start of the season. We've lost two out of three. There's numerous reasons for that. I'm not going to go into those. Some will say it's down to tactics. Some will say down it's, it's down to fitness. Some will say, like me, it's down to coming into the season totally ill-prepared. However, we did lose two of our first three games. Uh, we've then had the worst transfer window I think we've ever had. And now a few days later, it's all about Pochettino taking Oli's job. And, I, th you know, you have to think to yourself here, who does that story benefit? It benefits the Oli outers, of which they are not 50-50 at the moment with the fan base. So they are still a minority. Um, I respect why they are, but you are still a minority. So who does it benefit other than those people? Well, it benefits the media because it's Manchester United and they get to, you know, stir up trouble around the club and start looking for little cracks in the, in, in the fan base. And most of all, it, it benefits Woodward and the Glazers because they are the people who preside over this mess, who have just... Apps. I mean, I, I don't know any other job where you could balls up a transfer window like they've just done publicly. Like literally, I was saying a month ago, how do you walk away from the J Jaden Sancho deal when you're publicly in it, balls deep? How do you walk away with that without being absolutely vilified? And they have. They've not been vilified. It's literally not even a week since they messed that deal up. You know, the player himself is pissed off with Manchester United. He thought he was going to get that move. The fans thought they were going to get the move. The manager thought they were going to get the move. And not even a week later... We're not even talking about it anymore because once the transfer window shuts, most fans forget about it. And instead of less than a week later still talking about what a knobhead cock-up decision that was, we're now talking about sacking a manager that a few weeks ago got us to third in the league and has lost two of his first three. It's brilliant. I've got to say it's absolutely brilliant how the media get manipulated into strands that take fans away from the most important thing. Because... I would say this. Look, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I read this this morning and it's spot on. If anyone's ever seen that film Bambi, he is like Bambi. He's going to get shot. He's going to get shot. Uh, well, no, Bambi doesn't get shot, is he? Uh, Bambi. And was, ba was Bambi a he or a she? I don't know. Well done, Disney. You know, because it's it's neutral. But um, I don't know. Probably. I don't, uh, to be honest, I've never really watched the film. I don't really like that sort of thing. But Bambi's brother or mother or father gets shot. And I think that that's, that's a little bit... You know, it's going to be a tearjerker when Oli gets fired because um, it's like the Titanic. You know, Manchester United are like the Titanic. You know that shit in Titanic who jumps on the lifeboat and lets, you know, women and children die to save themselves? Well, that's a very much like Manchester United's ownership because it's like... But they haven't jumped on the lifeboat because there are no lifeboats. The lifeboats are all gone. And what Manchester United Football Club do is they grab Van Hal and they chuck him into the water knowing... You know, he might swim for a while, but the cold's going to get him eventually. Right, now Mourinho, now now Ollie, and they just sit on the ship. But at what point is the ship going to sink and they're going to get, you know, when are, when are they going to be removed? Because they, I can't just, you know, it amazes me that I'm reading this morning. Manchester United, Ed Woodward knows that it will be an unpopular decision to sack Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer, but he wants to do what's best for the club and he will be willing to do it. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, hold on a minute. What? Who wrote this? Ed Woodward? You know, Oli, he will sack Oli Gunnar Solskjaer even though it will upset some fans because he wants what's best for the club. Mate! I mean, look, you're pushing the stupid button a little bit too soon here. I mean, I know, I know, I know fans can be manipulated, but whoa, back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You want to sack another manager for what's best for Manchester United. How many managers does a chief executive get to sack before people realise that the issue is the person appointing these managers? I've never known anything like this. I've never known anything like this. If McDonald's were running a restaurant and it wasn't doing particularly well, they would look at the person who was managing the restaurant, not the people who were serving the food. Because the reality is that, that McDonald's restaurant is still getting loads of customs, so it can't be the food. 
you know, we are still watching Manchester United. We love Manchester United. So it's like that McDonald's restaurant or Burger King, let's be fair. We're not not going there because the food's crap. We're going there because we like it, but it's crap service. Well, that's the manager who's running it. And not, and not in, a, in a Manchester United manager sense. I mean, look, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer would be the guy flipping the burgers or organising, you know, have we got enough chips? The manager is the person running the place, which is Ed Woodward. At what point, it should have happened years ago, but at what point is that actually going to be the thing? And that's that needs to be the thing. Like, that needs to be the, you know, maybe the, I don't, I, the reality is, the Glazers own Manchester United. Ed Woodward runs Manchester United. Ed Woodward would have sacked four managers in eight years. This is one of the things we like to do. We might not like to, to buy the Jaden Sanchos of this world and the Perisiches of this world, but we are more than happy to sack managers and bring another one in because we know the boost in the share price that brings. So at what point do you get to the point where it has to be Ed Woodward out? You know, Ed Woodward out. Forget Glazers out, Woodward out. Because if if we are going down this route of sacking another manager, look, I don't know Ed Woodward. He's been invited on this show many a time. He won't do it because he's better than that. He, he thinks he's better than the fans. He, he won't entertain an opportunity to sit down and explain how he runs the football club to the people who basically provide him that platform to do it, which is you. If I... <clears throat> If I was Ed Woodward, instead of appointing people like Neil Ashton as PR spinners, I would sit down with fanzines. I would sit down with me and the United Stand and, dis and try and get your point across. Because I don't know you personally, and I know, I'm sure most of the live comments don't know him personally, but you are the chief executive of Manchester United. The chief executive of an insurance company or a bank, if that bank or insurance company fails, they will be removed. So if you are thinking of sacking another manager, then you should go with them. Why are you allowed to keep making bad decision after bad decision after bad decision? You should have been sacked years ago. And you definitely should be sacked if you're going to sack another manager. But you won't be because the Glazers and you are the same thing. You helped them buy the club. You benefit them with money. So, you know, you don't get judged on what on the most important thing, which is your footballing decisions. So look, to me... It amazes me that Ed Woodward has the power again to sack another manager. But on Pochettino, 100%, 100% Manchester United will be lining up Pochettino. They spoke to him back in January. Remember when, look, I mean, look hands up, put your hands up. It's reef time. Oli out. I said those words after the Burnley game. This is before we got Bruno. I was like, Oli's run his cause. He's done what he can, but we are, we are dusted. We are sunk. We are going nowhere. And then they pulled out Bruno Fernandes. And I was like, you know what? This is the signing they should have done in the summer. Let's give it a go. And to be fair to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, if you look at that last season, most of the season he didn't have his best player, Paul Pogba. Rashford was out for half the season. Martial was injured as well. Um, Bruno only came, out, came in half the season. You know, I, I, I was surprised he, he was still in a job in January because it was heading one way. Um, and, you know, he did have that amazing end to the season where he took us to third, which people just want to ignore. But the reality is we were talking to Pochettino back in January and it was very much expected. And even myself, I thought Oli won't be here in the summer and he pulled off a miracle with Bruno. So Man United have spoken to Pochettino before. Pochettino would love the Manchester United job. So Pochettino is on standby. And let's, you know, let's not mince our words here. We've lo we have lost, as I said before, we've lost two of our first three games. And next four Premier League games, we could easily lose two of them. We might not win any of them. And if you come out after six Premier League games and you've only got one win, you're probably going to get the sack. So look, the results may well happen that cause Oli to get the sack. But my issue with this is that the way we've been played, and we have been played yet again, is that instead of the focus being on the people who are sacking these people, who are, who are the definition of incompetence, and instead of the focus being on what was the worst transfer window I've ever bloody seen... We're now all moving towards where they want... Well, you know, we're like sheep being herded into the sheep pen by collie dogs. You know, we are there, uh, you know, being pushed in to these pens by those dogs. And they are basically the dogs of the press and Manchester United Football Club. And they're herding us into the pen, which is Poch in. That's what they're doing. Don't go anywhere near our incompetence pen or, 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 or the fact that we've done this three or four times before. Get them in the potch in pen. That's where we need them. And it's happening. And, you know, it happens every couple of years when they want to make a change to make us 
move away from their own incompetence. Um, and Pochettino would fit Manchester United like a glove. We need to back. Uh, we need to back Ollie through win or lose. Even if he has a bad season, we won't finish top four just because we switch managers, break the cycle, and back him. Says Dare. Well, it's, it's a you know, it's a good name, Dare, because it's a it, it's a brave person to do that. I'm certainly going to try and do it, but I know the way the fan base works, and, and I don't think it will. Seanuck says the media are manipulated to criticise Ollie so that Edward Wood and Glazers are moved to shadow for the blame and put everything on Ollie. Pratt Woodward says Seanuck. Well, that's 100 percent right, in my opinion. Um, and look, you know what? My, Pochettino would be perfect for Manchester United because he would provide the boost. Certain fans would start thinking, oh, we've got a man with tactics now, we're going to be fine. But if you know anything about Pochettino, he doesn't win things. That's not that's not in his CV. He does get top four, which the wood, uh, Woodwards and Glazers of this light, the world will like. Um, also, he does it on a budget. So, you know, they'll, they'll love him for that. You know, this is a man that we can give next to nothing and he won't complain um, because he hasn't. He didn't really complain at Spurs and he didn't complain at Southampton. So Pochettino is actually the quintessential manager that Woodward and the Glazers would want anyway because they'd look at his track record and go, he gets you Champions League football on very little money. Doesn't win your Premier League titles. He's not going to do that. They're not interested in that. And the reason Manchester United aren't bothered about winning Premier League titles, by the way, is because to win a Premier League title... The difference between coming third or fourth and winning a Premier League title is probably about three to four hundred million pounds. So you would need to spend three to four hundred million pounds to get a team to win the title. But that same team could still battle to get fourth or third like it did last year. If you win the Premier League, the difference in revenue is not three to four hundred million pounds. It's status. You don't get an extra three or three hundred or four hundred million pounds by finishing first instead of third. So basically, Manchester United would have to spend more money than they make to get the Premier League title. Well, for business people, that's not worth it for a shiny silver thing. So that's why they don't do it. Third and fourth place, revenue-wise, is better than fourth or uh, than fifth or sixth because the revenues from Europa League to Champions League are huge. So Manchester United Football Club, in the way that they run it, are very happy. It's a bit like Arsenal under Wenger. They're very happy with third or fourth every year because the revenues are very good compared to fifth or sixth. But the difference between third and fourth and first is huge to us as fans because we want to win. But to the owners, the revenue compared to the reward isn't worth it. So they're not bothered. So Pochettino would be perfect for Manchester United because this is a manager that can get his third or fourth every year. He's not going to win as the league. If he did, it's a miracle. But he will work on a budget. Um, if Oli is sacked, I wouldn't get Poch. Marco Rose from Glunchenblad. Glunchenbladbach is the best up-and-coming manager, I think. But we need a director of football or nothing will change, says Gustav. I mean, the positive of uh, next summer in 180 million Sancho, 120 million up Meccano, 60 million's out. You're dreaming, Ali Dowell. I, 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 you know what? I've got a lot of time and uh, respect for people who are writing out their transfers for next summer. We've not even had a week since last summer where we were talking about these very same deals that didn't happen. I have... No trust, no respect for Manchester United's negotiating board to do anything. So anybody who's saying we can do this, that and the other next summer, what, why would you think that? You know, COVID's going to bite more next summer. We'll have, we'll have even less. And we didn't even spend 60 million net this summer. So I've, I've got no confidence in Manchester United doing any business next summer at all. I just I just don't I don't think they'll do anything significant. Um and they'll spin it so that we all attack something else and we don't attack them, really, at the end of the day. I mean, Manchester Evening News have come out in response to this story about Pochettino this morning and said that uh, they understand that Manchester United are backing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, especially after backing him in the transfer window this summer. Well, I spat my coffee out. What? Manchester United are backing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because they've backed him in the summer transfer window. I mean, that's... That's some sort of messed up statement, that is. How do you back a manager when you factually didn't? So they actually think they've backed Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in the transfer window when they factually didn't. Like, the, the, hint, the, hint, the hint that you didn't back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in the transfer window was that you didn't get him Haaland, you didn't get him Bellingham, and you didn't get him Sancho. You didn't get him Grealish, you didn't get him a centre-back. So you're saying now that despite not getting him everything on his list... Backing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is getting him a 33-and-a-half-year-old Cavani, two 18-year-olds, a left-back, and Donny van der Beek. That's backing the manager, is it? Fuck yeah. They're deluded. They're absolutely deluded what they try and put out there. But this will be coming... You know, if Manchester, United, if Manchester Evening News are writing, Manchester, you need, Manchester Evening News understands 
that Manchester United are totally behind their manager after backing him in the summer transfer window. There's not somebody in the Manchester Evening News desk going, I'm just going to type that. Somebody from the club will be telling them that. So the club do think they've backed Oli in the transfer window. OMG. It's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. The, I just think, you know what? I don't even think it. We are run by incompetent people. And it's scary because you are not incompetent people in the majority. And the people running our football club have got no idea how to run a football club, let alone a club like Manchester United. They are so deluded. They are so bad at their job, but they're so arrogant with it. They think you're hysterical. They think you, when you put Glazers out and Woodward out, are hysterical and you don't understand the great job they've done. Like They really do sit there thinking they've done a good job, despite the whole world mocking them. And not just United fans. You've got Liverpool fans bloody laughing their head off and choking on their shreddies in the morning at the latest incompetence in the news about Manchester United. And that's reciprocated around all clubs. You've got fans and, and members of other big clubs like Juventus and Bayern Munich and, and Barcelona who look at Manchester United and pity us. They go, oh my God, remember when they were a big club? Look at how bad it can be. You know, we, we're effectively... You know, AC Milan were the club that I used to look at like that. Well, we're probably in a worse position than AC Milan because we're a bigger club. Why would Poch want the job? He knows he won't be backed. He said at Spurs he's not the manager, he's the coach because he doesn't get a say in transfers, says David Purcell. I mean, look, there is a positivity to Poch. The positivity to Poch is that he is a good coach and he's always worked with the director of football. So if he came to Manchester United... Would he demand a director of football, which is which is very important? But then again, I, I think you're uh, I think you are uh, you're pushing the envelope a bit of predict of predictability there because Pochettino might do what Mourinho did. Like Mourinho had a had a plan. He got sacked by Chelsea. He got desperate. Manchester United gave him the job, and his ego kicked in, and he went, "I can be the man to change Manchester United." And I don't think Mourinho demanded too much when he took the job. I think he was grateful to be given the opportunity at this massive club and thought that he could just go in and change things and then realised very quickly that as a manager at Manchester United, you don't have a support, support network above you. In fact, they're a hindrance and they're incompetent. You've got a very broken squad and it's a very lonely position to be in. And, and Mourinho did relatively OK at the start and then it just fell apart because he didn't have the backing of the people above him. He lost the players and suddenly you're the fall guy. You are the person that ends up, um, basically as Manchester United manager, you are the sandwich. And you start off as a nice BLT, but you end up being a turd because they just pressure you. They pressure you and turn you into shit. And that's what happens. The, the playing squad, and I'm not naming individual players here. I'm talking about the last eight years. Some of these players aren't here anymore. They ain't good enough because the recruitment from up above has been poor. So they provide a lot of problem for the manager uh, and a lot of disruption. And then above the manager, you've got a lot of disruption. And ultimately, you've got fans who put pressure on everything. And the thing that gets squeezed out is always from both sides the manager. The players will turn on the manager. The board will turn on the manager. They'll squash together. And eventually, that turd will slip out um, down the toilet. And then they'll open up again for something else. And then they'll squish and squish. Because the pressure from us and the media is all around. And the board will protect itself and the players will protect themselves and the manager will end up being the one that takes the fall. But yeah, you know, Pochettino might take the Manchester United job like Mourinho did and not demand this and not demand that. And then you end up, you know, being in a position of weakness. Sacking Oli talk is ridiculous. He's lost four competitive games since January. Best footy since Fergie and um, Fergie and bringing in the youth, says Ash Wilson. Negativity from transfers has been refocused on the players and the coach. This is Savish. Woodward sacks Ollie, gets Poch, becomes a hero. Woodward has played as like a fiddle again. I remember you predicting it, Mark. Well, it, I think anybody can predict it. I think my pet dog, Robbie, could predict it. And he doesn't even predict when it's dinner time, but he could predict what this is going to be. Um, United are playing us like fiddles. And the thing I would say is what I've said at the start. This isn't a witch hunt for me. The reality is the chief executive makes the decisions on transfers and player recruitment and most importantly managers. This chief executive will have sacked four managers and appointed his fifth. The chief executive needs to be sacked. Like, no other business would allow this. You know, if I employ somebody or you employ somebody and they're bad at their job, my manager would go, well, that's on you. You employed them. Make sure you get it right next time. I've got it wrong again. That's where well, you're gone. 
but Woodward goes, what, what, what does Woodward say to the Glazers? I've, I've got to sack another manager. Oh, Ed, that this will be your fifth one in eight years. You must do better. But I have got your dividends. Don't worry about it. Crack on. You do, you're doing a great job. Whilst whoever is managing the club has shown to be incompetent and squandered a fortune, the physical and mental condition of the players is solely on Oli and his coaching team, says Joseph, Joseph Borg. I disagree. I disagree, Joseph. The... Uh, the physical and uh, uh, fitness levels of the players have been ab ab abysmal back to Sir Alex Ferguson days. So back to Sir Alex Ferguson's last couple of years and you look at October and September, October, November, you look at the injuries, you look at the fitness levels. This is not an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer problem. Fitness and injuries and conditioning has been a problem at Manchester United for probably 10 years now. I don't know why that is because we've had difficult, different physical and conditioning things. I personally think it's poor recruitment and no manager is in charge of the recruitment at Manchester United. So, you know, I think it goes back to buying people like Eric Bay, who was injured three times in the season before we bought him, buying people like Delote, who were already injured, going after Usman Dembele, bringing in Cavani. They've got, you know, I'm just a fan. You're just a fan. But there's something on transfer market that shows your injury history. It takes two minutes. And you can basically look at that and go, they're a risk. Look at Bruno Fernandes on transfer market injury history. Doesn't have one. Look at Usman Dembele. He's sponsored by Bupa. Like, you know, it, it, it's just poor recruitment. I think poor recruitment is the thing that costs us in relation to fitness and conditioning. By this logic, any manager in the world is destined to fail at United eventually. So what's the point of changing managers anyway, says Vichel. Probably the best comment of the day. Um, I agree that Poch is perfect for the board. He's also perfect for his fans, improves players, has a philosophy, brings through young players and plays great football. Poch has waited for this job for four ages, says Dylan Taylor. Um, you, you, you see, Dylan, I'd love to know where you've researched Pochettino because you've absolutely owned yourself there. He hasn't got a great record of bringing through young players when you look at it. Actually, when you look at the history of how the club worked at Spurs, he didn't develop loads and loads of young players. That's a bit of a myth. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is doing that. So, you know, that's 1-1, one, one, even if you want to say that. Um, perfect for the fans. A lot of fans love Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So I, I disagree with you on that. Improves players. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has done that as well. Um, he's got a philosophy. Well, look, I don't like the Pochettino philosophy that much. I think his football isn't suited to Manchester United. I think he doesn't play with width. Yes, the fullbacks provide that. But that means he's going to have to buy new fullbacks. I mean, Tellez can provide some width, but who's going to provide it from the right? I don't think Pochettino's football is easy on the eye and he is quite stubborn. I just think if Oli gets sacked, I wouldn't go for Pochettino. And I'm not I'm not saying Oli's not going to get the sacks. I think he will, but Pochettino wouldn't be my coach. And I like Pochettino. I just, I've, I've always said, I don't think he suits Manchester United. I think what we're getting here is, as per usual, it's the new toy syndrome. Oh, something's got to be better than what we've got now. Pochettino will do the job. The guy's never won a trophy. He's played... I've seen him go to Man City and try and pass out from the back and get battered. He's a stubborn coach who doesn't play anywhere near the brand of football that Manchester United fans are accustomed to. I think there's a lot of United fans who just want something different to Oli and they go on about Poch. Oh, Poch is this, Poch is that. Poch is the perfect man for Manchester United. And it almost becomes an obsession that this thing... Because you know it's better than what we've got, that's the right thing. And it's not that I'm saying Oli's not going to get sacked. What I'm saying is, if Oli did get sacked, there's four or five other managers I would go with ahead of Pochettino who play a far better brand of football. And look, that could be the Ajax coach, that could be the RB Leipzig coach, it could, you know, even that Mönchengladbach coach sounds interesting. Why do Manchester United always have to... One of the big problems I think we always have at Manchester United is we always have to go after somebody else's thing. Why can we not get our own thing? Like, the great thing about Bruno Fernandes is we got him as ours. He, we didn't get him from Spurs. We didn't get him from Chelsea. He was ours. But we've had this running theme for years where Mourinho, he was somebody else's. He was Chelsea's success. Why are we going after Mourinho when he's a fallen idol? Spurs, Pochettino. He got the sack at Spurs. Why are we going after Pochettino? He's an ex-Spurs manager. Players as well. Mata, Chelsea's player. You know, there's loads of Matic, Chelsea's player. We, we, we've, got a, this, we've done this quite a lot. But the success of Manchester United has always been getting our own thing. You know, George Best came through the youth setup. Um, Brian Robson we got from West Brom. Cantona, we nicked him from Leeds. Ronaldo, we got him from Portugal. Sir Alex Ferguson was doing a good job in Aberdeen. You know, not fashionable Aberdeen. The, the identity of Manchester United is so easy. And yet we fail at it all the time. Like... 
for me, if Oli goes, you don't get Pochettino. There's too many question marks about him. And his style of football, I don't think, suits Manchester United. And I think there's a lot of people who want Pochettino who don't actually realise his style of football will probably piss you off very quickly. And if you're shouting about Oli making subs after 70 minutes, you're going to be doing the same with Poch. He's ridiculously stubborn about making changes. So, look, I'm not saying he's not going to be successful. And I think there are some people out there who think Pochettino is a great manager. And I respect that. But I also think, well, I also know there's a lot of people just going Pochettino's the great man because they don't actually do their research and they don't actually think things through. They just want a new pair of shiny shoes. And what I'm saying is Oli is destined to fail. I think they are. I think he is going to get the sack. I don't want him to. I want him to succeed. But I think the board have set him up to be sacked. And I think all this news we're getting at the moment is setting him up to be sacked. But if he does get sacked, I would rather we went for a Nagelsmann or, or, or somebody like that who is, you know, a manager who is performed really well at a less fashionable club ready and hungry to an up and coming an up and coming manager who's established himself and is ready to take the step up Pochettino's not up and coming he did get sacked at Spurs and he should have got sacked at Spurs he's not ever won anything uh, to me look if we get Pochettino I'll back him I said the same about Cavani and Matic I didn't really want them but when they come to Manchester United, I will back them. If we get Pochettino, I will back him. But I'd, I'd be, I'd pretty be, I mean, I don't really gamble, but I'd be pretty confident to say that within three years, he'll be gone and we'll be having the same chat again. Because he just, to me, is another version of a Mourinho, another version of a Van Hal, where, you know, they've, they've had their career, really. They've had their big thing. And we're, we're taking them in the hope that they didn't get sacked or they didn't end up on the scrap heap. And that they have got something left in the tank. And that's not the way to build a future. And look, whatever you say about Oli, I think he, he, you know, for the first year, he did try to build a future. Unfortunately, he's been massively let down in this transfer window. And he's been given, you know, not much of a vision. Welcome to the members club. Uh, Juno, thanks for joining. And uh, he bought through Harry Kane. That's enough for me. Yes, we're used to whip, but that club is dead, mate. Look forward, not backwards, says Dylan Taylor. Um, Ollie needs to be proactive and make some changes in the team so that we can judge whether it's his... I mean, he brought through Harry Kane. Oh, God. Stevie Wonder could bring through Harry Kane. He's one of the world's best strikers. He's not been... He wasn't bloody... You know, he wasn't bloody... I'm trying to think of a crap, crap striker. I mean, he wasn't... I can't think of any. You know, he... He wasn't big. It wasn't me and Pochettino sprinkled me with gold dust and now you're the world's best striker. Harry Kane was going to be come through no matter what. He's, he's, are, we now, are we now saying that Sir Alex Ferguson is responsible for Ronaldo? Of course he gave him a platform, but Ronaldo... I just think that's... I think, I just think that's, that's, that really, to me, is the prime example of the people who just don't understand what Pochettino is and just want a new toy. He brought through Harry Kane. Like Harry Kane was this absolute bag of strip, bag of shit centre back, and suddenly Pochettino got hold of him with his magic hands and turned him into one of the world's best strikers. Uh, Oli needs to be proactive and make some changes in the team that so we can judge whether it's his tactics that is his problem or is it a few big names who are letting him down and not performing. Prane, look, if against Newcastle last week we play a back five and Pogba starts and Maguire starts, then I'll be there at the front of the queue criticising him like everybody else. He has got to grow a pair. Um, Mark, get Ranieri, won the league with a team not as good as this United team. That's why he's not good, uh, not a gold enough manager. Get Zidane as player manager, Sazain Miassi. Why is there a media trial in Oli and not Pep? He spent tons of millions of money per season and has started equally bad, but despite the spend. Darshan, this is because oli has got no tactics and Pep has. Even though Pep's tactics have been the same tactics from day one and he's got no plan B, the media and everybody loves Pep because he does triangle passing. And Oli is a PE teacher. So that's just the media driven agenda. I, you know, I think you're right. I think Pep is a massive failure, but he won't get the uh, he won't get the um, criticism. But interestingly, look, you know, let, let's focus on a bit of cre uh, bit of negativity towards Oli or criticism for a moment. There is this story that's been floating around all week. And again, it's come out that Bruno Fernandes was very vocal at half time again in the Spurs game. It's come out again this morning. Bruno Fernandes was very vocal at half time and very critical of the players that he felt did not befit a Manchester United shirt. They did not they were not playing like a Manchester United player should play. And this has come out again from Bruno Fernandes. Um a story about Bruno Fernandes. I mean this is this is stunning. This is absolutely stunning. So Bruno Fernandes goes in at half time against Spurs we're 4-1 down. We've had an absolutely crap half. Most of it because of the defence. Nothing to do with Bruno. Bruno goes in on the players 
and says you are not playing like Manchester United players, gets into an argument with those players and gets subbed. And I'm like, hold on a minute. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer played with Roy Keane. How can you... Is that, that would be like subbing Roy Keane at half-time because he goes in on the players. I'm like, hold on a minute. And that the, the worrying thing here is let's not make this simplistic. Bruno Fernandes is in the dressing room. He's shouting at certain players, you're not good enough. Those players gang up on Bruno and Oli subs him off. That's what I think happened. Because if Bruno Fernandes had control of that dressing room like Roy Keane did, you would never sub him off. So the worrying thing is, and we saw it with Lindelof. We saw it with Lindelof. Lindelof was crap in the Europa League semi-final. Bruno balled him out on the pitch and suddenly Lindelof found a backbone and started having a go back. And the thing that angered me there was not that I thought it was brilliant the way Bruno had a go at him, was the way that Lindelof had a go back. It shows a lack of respect and it shows that these players are the problem. Because if Bruno's had a go at those players in the dressing room and they've had a go back, so much so that he's lost you know, the players and Oli's had to sub him because everyone else has ganged up on Bruno. This is the problem at Manchester United, isn't it? This is the problem because when they get called out for being crap, they suddenly grow a backbone and start arguing back and they force that person out. So who's to say that Bruno didn't have a go at a few players and they had to go back and then Bruno has to come off because he's fallen out with them and Oli can see that. So that's the bad thing with these players, isn't it? They perform badly, they get a bit of criticism, justified, and then they grow a pair and start having an argument back. And that this is what I mean about dressing room unrest. There are bad, bad influences in that Manchester United dressing room. There are. There are. They, you know, they, they don't perform on the pitch, but then they get criticised and they suddenly gang up and, and become a team in the dressing room. Well, bollocks. You went out in the second half, you got Bruno out the team, and in the second half, you were worse than you were in the first half. And I know we only let two goals in, but we were a shambles. An absolute bloody shambles. So, United's dressing room is run by the wrong people. And this has been known for a very long time. You know, this is why people like Roy Keane and Gary Neville talk about it. Because my, Gary Neville and Roy Keane know people who work in the bloody dressing room. And they know that these players are on stupid wages, have too much power, and ultimately... They will chirp up when they get a bit of criticism. So, you know, look, we're, we all want to get behind Bruno and say Bruno's our Roy Keane. But he can't be Roy Keane because he'll stand up and say something and he hasn't got the rest of the team around him going, yeah, you're right. They'll suddenly start arguing back. It's You know, I've worked with people like this all my life. You know, they're absolutely crap at their job. They'll try and be lazy and crap at their job. But the minute you call them out for it, they're complaining about you and they're saying, no, 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 you don't know what you're about. Suddenly they're the hardest working person ever. When you, you know, they work so hard not to do their job that when they actually get called out for it, they'll suddenly start working hard to moan at the person who's moaning at them instead of doing your bloody job in the first place. So, yeah, it is interesting. Um, Mark, Pep got a hunt. I'm not talking to you, Zane, anymore about Pep. Too many flip flops want Oli out after one to six mauling yet. Don't hear the scousers calling for Klopp out after the seven two, but they are the champions, Colin. Pep versus Oli. Uh, I'm not going to do Pep versus Oli Dylan. It's irrelevant. Do you think Oli will save the season like he did in January? If gets to January in this season with some transfers, tactically potch better than Oli, says Pratic. And I, I mean, I, I, I'm going to stick. I'm going to say what I've always said, and I think a lot of people agree with me. This as soon as that transfer window closed, I thought it was over. I said it on transfer deadline day. This is the beginning of the end for Oli because the board know the pressures on them, and the way our board works is they. When the pressure's on them, they need to find another. They need to find some a scapegoat, and it's always the manager. So I said it on transfer deadline day. The minute we didn't get the Sancho deal done, and the minute we had a crap transfer window, I knew that Ollie's days were numbered because they will sacrifice him to protect themselves, and they've done it four times, and they'll do it next time, and the next time, and the next time, and until we get a director of football who is allowed to run the football club and sack Ed Woodward and get rid of the Glazers, I don't think anything will change really. People forget Poch won nothing with a Spurs side as good as our current side, if not better. Prime Lloris, Alderweireld, Valtongen, Eriksson, Son and Kane, to Savish. And love you, Mark, but you do this all the time. You bury guys you don't like and try and uplift the one you do like. Uh, Luke Shaw and Tellez, stop the bogus assumptions, says Yankee Wiz. I'd like a little bit more evidence there, mate, but uh, you don't have to watch the show. Um, we've got Ricky and Flex and Sophie on tonight, so as per usual, there's always different opinions to listen to, and I'm more than happy to read your comments out, but don't know what you're talking about about Luke Shaw and Tellez because I've actually said that Tellez should start against Newcastle. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of Luke Shaw, but this whole agenda that I've got about Luke Shaw 
I've even been called white bias about Luke Shaw, which is just bloody ridiculous. I think he's a good left back and I think he's the best left back we've got. But we've now bought Tellez, who is Porto's best player and is one of the best left backs in the world. So for me, we've got him very, very cheap. Tellez will start ahead of Luke Shaw. I'm not, I don't, well, I say that, you never know with Ollie, but I don't see the point in buying a player of Tellez's quality and not playing him ahead of Luke Shaw. I do like Luke Shaw, though. I think he gets a lot of unfair criticism. I think he's the best fullback at the club. wan is trash at the moment. So, but I don't know. I don't really know what you're getting at there because I would not be picking Luke Shaw against Newcastle. As much as I like him, I would pick Tellez. We need a boost. He's an attacking left back. Luke Shaw hasn't delivered in that area. I think Luke Shaw's a brilliant defensive left back, just like wan -Bissaka. But we need to get more width. Rashford can't cross the ball. Greenwood can't cross the ball. So you need your fullback. I mean, I think Cavani's future is dependent on Tellez getting forward and putting crosses in because nobody else can do it. wan doesn't do it. Maguire shouldn't be the captain, says Joel Morris. Bruno having a go at players in the dressing room just shows that he's a leader and Bruno should be the captain. Bruno needs to be backed. Like, I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Carrick and Phelan did the worst thing they could do on San Sunday lunchtime. You've got a captain in Bruno who has a go at the team and you sub him. What sort of message does that send out? We won't let you overpaid, lazy shits be criticised by a player who actually cares. Get out, Bruno. I mean, that's the message that we've got as fans. So put the truth out there. But, uh, well, the story today was that Bruno went to Oli too, saying he was using the wrong tactics. Maybe players are realising Oli isn't good enough, says Halim. And last eight years, we've been struggling with the team chemistry. Previous manager were not capable of making us into a team. Manager's backing is important, says Jagvik. And Kane was on loan at Leicester with Lingard. So, yes, Podge brought him through. Poch won nothing because he wasn't back. Still made it to the Champions League. I think Dylan Taylor is Pochettino. He's spending a lot of money talking crap about Poch. But um, what I would say about Poch is, though, he did want Bruno Fernandes. So, you know, that is a player that he did want. And, you know, I'm sure he wouldn't mind Tellez either. So, there's a few players that he probably would want. I mean, just talking about fullbacks... Um, there's talk that Brandon Williams might go on loan because he won't want to be third choice left back. I personally think, would he not be the backup right back now or is it Fozu Menza? Um, and Palestri, this is quite good. Apparently Palestri rejected Leon, which again shows that he's probably been scouted quite well because Leon are one of those clubs that get players in and they do really well at Leon, and then they end up being all oh, everybody wants them. So the fact that he rejected Leon, look, there'll be a lot of players that have gone to Leon that haven't ended up being good. But look, I think Palestri and Ahmed Traore have been scouted very well, and that excites me. I've always said I want us to use our European scouting network more, and I think we did do that. Whether it's desperation or not, I think they are well scouted players, and I hope they end up being good players. Um, please smash a like on the video if you're watching live. We're nearly at 2,000. So, Oli wants players with a certain mentality, finally gets one in Bruno, and then throws him under the bus. If so, Oli's close to the end, says Sean Finnerty. I mean, Sean, I think you're right, but you're wrong. Because what I think, what I understand happened in that dressing room is that Bruno Fernandes had a go at a lot of players and a lot of people and they turned on him. Now, Oli has a choice there. He either keeps Bruno on and sends them out in fighting amongst each other or he goes with the majority on that in that situation. And sometimes in a situation where, you know, you've got to go out and play 45 minutes of football and there's a minority and a majority. And even if the minority is right, you might just take them out and send the majority out. Because, and, and I don't agree with that, but that might be what he's done. I think what he does long term is really important. Because next week against Newcastle, Bruno Fernandes could be wearing the captain's armband. And in which case, Oli has done that. He's gone with the short term solution to solve it long term. If next week Harry Maguire is holding the captaincy and Bruno's on the bench, then, you know, he's siding with the majority, which we know are the weak majority. But I'd pretty much be sure that Bruno's had a go at people and they've all ganged up on him. Because look at the players that are in that first team. They've been together for a long time. A lot of those players were part of the embarrassment against Everton 18 months ago. So these players, Lindelof absolutely exposed the team mentality in the Europa League semi-final where they totally cost us that game. Bruno and the attackers, and Bruno Pogba, Fred, and the front three played really well against Sevilla. The back four let us down. They, they cost us the Europa League semi-final uh, final spot. Bruno went in on Lindelof, and Lindelof started giving it back. And that, to me, demonstrates what the problem is at Man United. The crappy players that cost us games will start turning on players who expose them. 
even though the player that's exposing them is right, they'll suddenly start it. And this this feeds into the dressing room and rest that we've heard for a long time, that the influential influences in the dressing room are the players that are the problem, are the inconsistent players, who on their day are really good, but have too many bad days. Whereas you get a Bruno Fernandes, who majority has, a, even on a bad day, who who produce, and they get drowned down by the incompetent players. It needs, you know, that that the club needs a clear out from top to bottom. You know, and I'm not the first person to say that, but it includes the playing staff. Ideally, you'd do a FIFA. You'd get rid of 10 players and you'd bring 10 new players in and you'd clear it out. But the problem is, you can't even get rid of Jones and Rojo. You know, you can't clear the Deadwood because they're all on too much money. So it's a very, you know, whether whether Poch gets the job, Nagelsmann, Oli stays, whatever. There's no solution here. We're not, I don't care who your new manager is, we're not winning the league. This team is not winning the league anytime soon until we do get a director of football, until we do get proper owners, until we do clear out most of the crap that we've got. And we can't do it because the damage done by the chief executive and the owners has basically tied managers' hands behind their back. If I was manager of that football club, I'd want a sporting director ahead of me and I'd want to clear out about 12 players. But what I'd get told from the board is, well, we can't sell them and we're not, we're not letting them go for cheap. You know, these, these players are on £80,000 a week um, and we've got to get money for them, but nobody will give it to them. So you'll have to work with them. And that's the message every manager gets at United. Anyway, I could talk and talk and talk. We'll continue it on the 8 o'clock show. Thanks everyone for watching. Get in the comments. I think, unfortunately, one thing I would say is that we are in that situation where Stian says, why are we saying Oli out? I mean, we must stop this ridiculous agenda and back Oli now. The players has a responsibility to get fit and do their job too. Stian, unfortunately, I mean, you've sort of hit on something I was going to say at the end of the video. The Glazers, Ed Woodward, the media have already won. They've already won. Nobody's talking about the worst transfer window we ever had anymore, and it's not even a week ago. Everybody is now talking about dressing room unrest, Ollie out and Poch in. The media have spun their story and Manchester United have won. No one's talking about the Glazers or Woodward anymore. It's all about the poor manager who, look, maybe he will get the sack. I think he will. Maybe he deserves the sack. I don't think he does. But whether he does or he doesn't, whether you're passionately Ollie in or you're Ollie out, whether you're passionately Poch in or Ollie out or, or Poch out, the point is, you've, focused, you've been focused onto the wrong argument. They've already won. They've manipulated you. They've played you like a fiddle. They've done it again. They've done it four times now, and they'll do it five, six, seven, eight times. You're already focusing on this little thing, and the huge problem here is it's like, it's like, it's like concentrating on a spot on your nose when you've got a huge tumour on your arse. And that's, we're all looking at the mirror. We're not looking behind us and the damage it's done. And and that's that's what they do. They just keep doing it. So they've already won. It's sad. They've already won. And they've already won because we're already arguing amongst ourselves. And when they see United fans arguing amongst themselves, they've won. Because Manchester divided stops as being Manchester United. And Manchester United is the only thing that, that matters. But they've always been Manchester divided. And if they divide the fan base, we're arguing amongst ourselves and we're not focusing on them. And they've won. Thanks everyone for watching. It's very sad. Speak to you all soon.